Hi, my name is Andreas, and in this tutorial, I'd like to go over the basic scheduling features in iLab. The first thing we're going to do is log in. That usually involves an email address and a password. Once we've logged in, we're normally directed to the home page. The home page looks to aggregate important information and links from across the system for us. So here we can see I have a bunch of unread messages. I've used four cores in the past several months. I've scheduled time on four pieces of equipment in the past month. And I've scheduled time on resources in the coming month. To see a list of all the cores available at the institution, click on the List All Cores link in the left-hand menu. If you've identified the core you're interested in, go ahead and click on the link for that particular core. Each core has a number of tabs across the top that break down information into different areas. The leftmost tab, the About Our Core tab, has information about the core. Here we may have a list of the services available, contact information, and how to sign up or register or get started using equipment. We're going to focus primarily on scheduling, so let's click on the scheduling tab. On the scheduling tab, we see a list of the equipment available in this core. Sometimes this information is categorized. Here we just see a flat list. To see more information about any particular piece of equipment, go ahead and click on the description tab. Sometimes cores or owners of equipment will include images and links to manufacturer sites. Pricing information is also often included. Here we can see this inverted compound microscope is available Monday to Friday from 9 to 5 at a cost of $35 per hour. To schedule time on the equipment, either click on the, the link, which is the uh, confocal microscope name here, or the view schedule button to the right. This will take you to the schedule that is particular to that piece of equipment. And if you scroll down, you can work with the scheduling interface to get some time on the calendar. Let's review some of the navigation options here. First, on the right-hand side, we can navigate the events by day, by week, or by month. Over on the left-hand side, we have left and right arrows to move back and forth in time. The colors on the calendar represent different kinds of events. Yellow events are your events in the past. Green events are your events in the future. Gray events are other people's events. And red usually indicates downtime or maintenance. And here's an example of that. To find availability on the calendar, I typically like to start with the month view and find a day that looks like it has some availability or that doesn't look too busy. You can drill down and see the specifics of any day by clicking the day link. And here I can see that things are quite busy. If I'm interested in scheduling for this day, I might click on the week view to see what other times are available around then. We're still looking quite busy in the next couple of days here, so I might go ahead and scroll to next week. Monday looks ideal. I will left click the mouse and drag on the time that I would like to schedule. This brings up a form that prompts me to fill in some basic information about the event. On the left hand side, I will typically see the cost per hour on the equipment. I will see a start time and end time. And in some cases, I will be prompted to provide payment information. The format of this information varies depending on your institution. Here we're being asked for a cost center and fund number. 
Over on the right hand side, you may be required to fill out information about how you're going to use the piece of equipment. In this case, I'm going to indicate that I'll use the Zeiss at 5x to image two samples that are whole mounts. And no, I won't need help setting up the equipment. Once I've finished entering this information, I can click Save Reservation, and now my event is on the calendar. If I use a piece of equipment regularly, there are a couple of different ways I can easily get to that piece of equipment to schedule time. My favorite is to use the home page. By clicking on the home page link in the left hand window, I will bring up my home panel, which includes these two links here. Resources scheduled during the past month and resources scheduled during the coming month. By clicking these tabs open, I can see the equipment that I've used in the past month and again, equipment that I've scheduled in the upcoming months. There's a link directly to the schedule and over on the right, I can see when my next appointment is scheduled. So here we can see I have an appointment on January 12th, 2012 at 10 o'clock. If I click on this link, I get right back to that view that we were looking at before, set to the day or the last day that's associated with that event. Moving events around on the calendar is quite simple as well. The core can put in a number of different rules that will restrict how you can delete and remove items, rather delete and move items. But if you're allowed to, you can actually just grab an event click on it and drag it to move it. So here, maybe 9.30 was a little too early on Friday, and I'm gonna move that schedule up an hour. You can even move your events from one day to another. So for example, if I realize my experiments won't be ready to, to image on January 17th next week, I might decide to move them to the 18th. And I can do so by grabbing the event and moving it to the next day. I hope this tutorial has given you a feel for how to use scheduling in the system. Of course, if you have any questions or problems at all, please feel free to email us at support at ilabsolutions.com.